this is the last thing one of America's enemies wants to hear on the battlefield. The iconic of the A-10 Warthog has been the bane of many foes' existence for the past several generations of warfighting. And just when some thought the A-10 was done for, the Air Force has given this iconic warbird several new upgrades that will make it shred anything unlucky enough to face it. Starting with the GAU-8 Avenger, which is the business end of this lethal warbird. Don't worry, despite all the upgrades, this iconic weapon wasn't removed from the aircraft. In fact, it got better. The GAU-8 Avenger is the main weapon of the A-10. This electronically armed and hydraulically driven seven-barreled minigun can fire a staggering 3,900 rounds per minute with 1150 rounds of 30 millimeter ammunition capacity the avenger can take out more than a dozen tanks vehicles or bunkers all in one go how does the warthog accommodate such a huge weapon with a length of just under 20 feet and a weight of just over 4,000 pounds fully loaded the weapon has got to be centerline in the aircraft for equal weight distribution however not all of this weight is the gun itself at just over 600 pounds for the physical machine gun, the bulk of the weight in this system comes from the ammunition, which can either be armor-piercing or high-explosive rounds. But doesn't having a heavy weapon firing hundreds of explosive shells underneath the pilot sound dangerous? Well, it is, but the aircraft has several innovations to make it less dangerous for the pilot. First, the Avenger is surrounded by a titanium bathtub, these thick plates encapsulate the gun from the pilot so that if there is a catastrophic failure, none of the shrapnel from the explosion will hurt or kill the pilot. In addition to this, the Avenger has a unique way to shave off weight to have more ammunition and more lethality on the battlefield. Normal ammunition casings are brass, which is extremely heavy. On the Warthog, the casings are made of aluminum, which cuts the weight by 30% and, by extension, can carry more ammunition to stay in the fight longer. Another innovation is that the casings are not expended from the aircraft. But why does that matter? Expended casings are a foreign object to breathe that, if sucked into jet engines, would not exactly be the best thing for them. If a pilot sucked these up, they could cause a stall, an engine fire, or even an explosion in rare circumstances. By keeping all of the casings inside the aircraft, the pilot doesn't have to worry about losing an engine from their own shell casings. However, this is not the only benefit of keeping the shells inside. Because the gun and ammunition weigh so much, the A-10 needs to keep the empty shells to help stabilize the aircraft and keep it balanced. Ejecting all of these shells would throw off the center of gravity and make the plane tip over. So how on earth are they going to keep the plane balanced and avoid the worst case scenario where the plane goes barreling into the earth at top speed? Anyways, back to the A-10. Maintaining balance is so important in the A-10. This is why, when no ammunition is loaded, steel ballasts are installed inside the nose of the aircraft to keep the plane balanced while in flight. This is double important when you consider the fire control system that takes over when the pilot squeezes the trigger. Once the pilot locks in on a target, the A-10's onboard computer system takes over. Because the pilot has to worry about so many other things, the system will automatically adjust the aircraft for things like pitch, roll, and yaw in flight to keep the Avenger steady within a 5-mile milliradian hitbox. Well, you would be right. However, in this case, your teacher told you that this would come in handy one day was actually right. This is because it is the basis for how the Avenger keeps its accuracy. When the Avenger fires, the system aims to stabilize the gun to within 5 milliradians from the aim point. But what does that mean in real life? This precise engineering equates to a spread pattern of 80% of the shots hitting within a 5-foot distance at 1,000 feet and going out to a 40-foot distance at 4,000 feet. And if you don't think that's too impressive, consider this. 
The average main battle tank is around 30 to 40 feet, depending on the make, model, and country of origin, which means that potentially a tank could get shredded with hundreds of high explosive shells in a matter of a few seconds. Pretty impressive, huh? And despite how impressive the Avenger is, it's not the only weapon system on board. Underneath each wing, there are 11 pylons. Essentially, a pylon is just a piece of metal that's fabricated to be flush with the wing and fit different types of weapons. Some of the pylons are slightly different since some carry sensors we'll get to in a little bit, while others are hardened to carry more weight. But what's even more fascinating is what the Air Force loads onto these pylons. One of the primary weapons that A-10s carry is the AGM-65 Maverick missile. This anti-tank missile is a 37-kilogram warhead that can penetrate the armor of most legacy Soviet tanks. These missiles can be infrared, electro-optical, or laser-guided musicians, giving pilots flexibility in how they want to engage. In addition to these missiles, the Warthog can carry either 500-pound or 2,000-pound general-purpose bombs. However, these aren't like the dumb munitions of World War II. Instead, each of these bombs received a Joint Directed Attack Munition, or JDAM, package that turns these dumb bombs into GPS-guided menaces. But that's not the only upgrade. Because of weight issues, the A-10 has been limited in carrying smaller munitions. However, this has been a problem since a lot of the targets the A-10 has engaged in recent years do not require a 2,000-pound or even a 500-pound bomb. Instead, the GBU-39 small-diameter bomb is the right tool for the job. But there was a problem. In previous A-10 models, these bombs were too small to fit properly on the pylons. With recent upgrades, the A-10C Warthogs that are flying today can easily accommodate up to four GBU-39s each, essentially turning the Warthog into a flying bomb truck. But physical weapons are not the only upgrades made to the Warthog in recent years. They've also gotten some pretty sick countermeasure systems. On legacy models of the aircraft, the Warthog came equipped with two kinds of countermeasures, chaff and flares. Chaff is essentially a superheated cloud of hot metal flakes that is supposed to confuse an incoming missile. Flares are also hot, disposable objects with intense heat meant to rein in heat-seeking missiles. They're both commonly used since chaff can often confuse both heat-seeking and infrared homing missiles, while flares can also walk heat-seeking missiles away from the aircraft. Imagine you're flying the A-10 and suddenly a missile walks onto you. How do you stay safe? That's where these radar warning receivers come in handy. In order for most types of missiles to get a lock, an air or ground unit needs to lock on the target first to gather a targeting control solution before firing a missile. Located on the wingtips and the back aft, the new A-10s have improved radar warning receivers that are better at detecting incoming threats and computing their own fire control solutions on when and where to deploy countermeasures. With only one to three seconds to react to incoming fire, this system is critical since it takes all the speed, wind, and turning calculations out of the pilot's mind so they can focus on flying the aircraft. However, having an automated deployment sensor is not the only improvement. Recent upgrade packages have also seen the ADM-160 Miniature Air Launch Decoy, or MAUD. The MAUD is the latest and greatest decoy in the Air Force's arsenal and greatly enhances the a 10 survivability. Here's how it works. Carried underneath one of the pylons, the pilot can deploy the MAUD when a particularly deadly or missile of unknown capability has been fired at the Warthog. Once off the rails, the MAUD is pre-programmed to squawk one of any number of pre-programmed frequencies to mimic other aircraft. The new Warthogs also feature a robust combat system suite and new sensors. Part of the reason why the A-10 is so reliable is because of its reliable navigation systems that allow it to accurately know its position even in GPS-denied environments. How the A-10 Warthog does this is due in large part to its improved navigation suite for its central data unit. 
The central data unit is the brains of the warthog's navigational picture. While it can receive GPS updates to know where it is in the world, if GPS is denied, this isn't a problem due to the mission library that's loaded in the unit before each flight. The mission library is a complex route of up to 2,000 data points that tell the aircraft where it is supposed to go. In combat, the pilots use various tools on board that include advanced terrain matching software that can serve as a visual indicator if they're on track or not based on the preloaded charts. In addition to the preloaded charts and ground terrain matching software, the Warthog also comes equipped with a radar stabilized altimeter that can easily tell the pilot their altitude no matter what sort of crazy maneuvers or turns are going on. However, this radar is arguably the least advanced on board when compared to the state-of-the-art targeting pods carried on the pylon. In addition to the electronic warfare pods mentioned earlier, the A-10 can also carry two ANASQ-236 Dragon's Eye targeting pods with one under each wing, and their capabilities are literally out of this world. These active electronically scanning arrays come standard with advanced side-looking airborne radars and synthetic aperture radars. With these radars, the A-10 can take photo-quality images that show finite details from tens of thousands of feet away. And how good are these photos, you might ask? Well, according to some experts, the A-10 was so good in Iraq and Afghanistan that it could see partially buried IEDs in the crowd. That takes high-definition TV to a whole other level. These radars need to take such high-quality photos because they come equipped with round-moving target indicators. These computer programs essentially have a library of common equipment the A-10 could see on the battlefield and compare to what the images show. Because the A-10 is moving incredibly fast and often under hostile fire, it really helps the pilots out a lot by being able to scan wide areas for targets. How do pilots see targets identified by these high-tech pods? Think of it like a video game, HUD, but in real life. Known as the HGU-55 Hybrid Optical-Based Inertial Tracker, or Hobbit, this revolutionary helmet is a real-time battle space management system that has revolutionized the A-10's combat performance. But how? What the Hobbit does is it allows the pilot a heads-up display, eyes-out approach combined with being a targeted data processor. This means that as the pilot looks out the window, they can see crucial data like altitude, airspeed, g-forces, and other flight data combined with the locations of enemy and friendly units. When pilots look through that monocle, they will see enemy units highlighted in red triangles while friendlies are in green. In addition to having this information, the pilot can designate targets as hostile without looking away, since the helmet cameras are interfaced with the combat system suite. Therefore, the pilot can look away at, say, a tank designated hostile, and then start shooting at it, all without looking away. But how does the information get to the other aircraft in formation? Thanks to Link 16, the A-10 Warthog is now more interconnected on the battlefield than ever before. Link 16 is an encrypted tactical data link and is the gold standard in secure military communications. Through frequency hopping, sending information at regular intervals, and other secure methods, the data link is able to share information with other A-10s through Link 16 instantaneously on the battlefield. In real life, if our pilots wanted to target an enemy tank convoy, they could target it with the Hobbit, broadcast it to the formation, and then swoop in for an attack. During this attack, crucial information like fuel status, battle damage, and remaining ammunition can all be shared so that flight commanders can make sound tactical decisions without waiting for voice communications from each pilot. And if you thought that was cool, wait till you hear about some of the new survivability measures that make the A-10 almost impervious to any type of ground fire. Colloquially known as the titanium bathtub, this piece of armor is what helps ensure the pilot remains safe inside the cockpit, despite whatever is going on around the plane. While there's not a literal bathtub around the pilot, 
1,200 pounds of rolled titanium are meant to encapsulate the pilot and key aircraft systems from battle damage. This armor, which ranges in thickness from 0.5 to 1.5 inches thick, is the cornerstone of the A-10's survivability. While some naysayers think the armor is not as good as it purportedly is, historical performance on the battlefield has proven that the A-10 can basically eat any type of small arms and heavy machine gun rounds up to small caliber anti-aircraft rounds. But even if the A-10 were to take some serious battle damage, there are numerous redundancies on board to help mitigate it. One of these redundancies is self-sealing fuel tanks. Self-sealing fuel tanks are when a standard fuel tank on an aircraft has a special layer of usually rubber-type materials that swell upon contact with fuel. This works in real life when the A-10's fuel tanks get hit and start leaking fuel. Once this fuel hits the self-sealing layer, a special rubber material will absorb the fuel and seal the leak. Another way the A-10 is redundant for battle damage is through its vertical stabilizers on the rear of the aircraft. While they might look clunky and oddly shaped, these stabs actually serve a valuable purpose. If you look at the A-10 from the side, you'll see that the engine exhaust comes out right behind these stabs. And while the A-10 doesn't have afterburners that reduce the heat signature of the exhaust, there is still a ton of heat back there that can serve as a juicy target for a man-portable missile system. But any would-be enemy firing a man pads at an A-10 would have a very hard time scoring a critical hit on the engines, since if shooting from the side, the incoming missile would strike the stab and not the engine. If shot at from behind, the A-10 is already going away and can probably outrun a smaller man pads type munition. Even if the soldier scored a lucky hit, Thanks to independent propulsion and hydraulic systems on board, the pilot could isolate lost systems and either side could pick up the slack for the other. This even includes the event of a fire on board. However, the A-10 is not only built to handle external threats, the airplane can actually down itself if some measures are not taken. But how? When the A-10 comes in with a steep angle of attack, it's a very real possibility that the engines could stall without enough airflow going into them because of their design. Because of this and other upgrades, the A-10C will shock the world with its combat prowess as much today as it did during its combat debut during the Persian Gulf War.